Thanks so much for tuning in to Talking Point. I'm your host, Neeraj Shah. Somewhere in July, we, we remember viewers, we've had four straight weeks of stock market gains. And the beauty about last week was that despite it being a truncated week and the week uh, which or to which a long weekend followed, we had gains for four straight days, which shows that there's a bit of a momentum in the market. Now it's 16,200 on the Nifty. Back in July, we had Gautam Shah. So less than a month ago or thereabouts, where he had spoken about the possibilities of 16,800, 17,000 being reached in the month of July. The markets did that. And in the month of August, the rallies continued. Now we've had a really strong pullback move done from the lows of 15,300, circa 15,300. The question therefore comes at this point of time that is this rally getting overstretched or are people who are worrying about this being overstretched being unnecessarily worried? Let's get him in on the conversation again to try and assess how is he looking at the charts and the sentiment indicators. Gautam, great having you. Thanks for joining in. Thanks, Davis. Thanks for having me. So, Gautam, incessant move, one-way move nearly. You, We've hardly had a fall, so to say. What does that indicate and what do the charts indicate at the current levels? Yes, Neeraj, since October, we've actually behaved like a pendulum. If you really look at the uh, price action since October, I think you've had rallies of three, 4,000 points, and you've also had dips of about three, 4,000 points. In fact, it's a very unique bear market that played out in the last nine months. I mean, something which I haven't seen in the last two decades, because within the bear market, you had these large, sharp rallies, which gave one the hope that all is well once again. But every time you know the markets rallied, it came back down. This time, as the rally played out, there was this uneasy feeling that maybe the market will do something similar it will find resistance at some point and it will turn around because any which way there were just too many headwinds from a fundamental side. You know, we spoke about it, recession, inflation, interest rates, geopolitical risk, oil, currency, all of those factors were there. But then as we analyze this recovery, we just noticed that the leadership was different. The momentum was different. The participation was better. The corrections were very, very shallow. And the fact that from a technical standpoint, the market kept respecting supports and the moving averages. That's probably the reason we were working with a medium term target of 17,750, which has been done. And probably we are crossing that number today, hopefully on a closing basis. So I think the texture has looked very different. The market has more upside. It, it will be too early for me to say that a new bull market has started. But I think on an index level, there is room till about 18,400. Yes, people are concerned that we've run up a lot and there is room for some correction. But when you get such wonderful global cues from US markets and European markets, India cannot you know, get into a corrective uh, uh, phase on a standalone basis. So I think based on breadth studies, yes, we are overbought. The number of stocks trading above the 50-day moving average is historically high. These are numbers that we've not seen for many, many years. And therefore, there is room for some pullback sometime over the next couple of weeks. But I think as investors and as positional traders, you stay in the game and you tag along and you don't fight this trend. So I think 17,400 and 17,100, according to me, are now solid support for the rest of uh, August. And if everything goes as per plan, 18,400 and beyond is definitely coming. Okay. I have three follow-ups to your first question. Let me first take the very immediate one. Uh, you mentioned a, le a closing level above a particular level point for the Nifty. Whether it happens today or tomorrow, as the case may be, but if it does happen, does that therefore is that indicative of the up move continuing and becoming quicker? See, I would honestly like the market to consolidate a little here. You know, a vertical move is never healthy beyond a point, and it's just been uh, too too rosy. You know, with what's happened in the last few weeks. But uh, markets being markets, and given the kind of strength that we're getting from global indices, look at Nasdaq, look at S and P five hundred last Friday. The fact that oil has cooled off you know, so much, rupee seems to be stabilizing below 80. All of these factors suggest that it's very difficult to break the current momentum. So a smallish 300, 500 kind of a pullback, it would actually please me. But it's not something which I'm wanting because I think you're anyway, you know, money is on the, uh, mm. you know, in the game and wanting this market to see much upside. So any which way, you know, you need to stay invested as an as a investor or a positional trader. Yeah, but, but the close above a particular level, is that indicative of something uh, quicker? I'm just trying to understand technically. Yes, indeed. In fact, 17,750 is an area where multiple technical studies come together. I think as we speak, we are trading above that number. And if we do close above that number in the next couple of trading sessions, it would suggest that the market is opening up further upside. 
Got it. Now, to juxtapose this with what, how you're seeing the world charts, Gautam, because I heard you mention that the solid support coming in from the globe is arguably helping, and it doesn't take uh, a crystal ball to see that. The question is, do any of those charts, if you study them, indicate any kind of nervousness at all, Europe in particular? Not at all. In fact, India has been the best performing market in the world. If you look at the last six weeks, uh, India has been first off the block. You know, others are just starting to participate only now. Uh, look, look at the kind of gains the uh, European markets or some of the Asian markets which have been underperforming all along because of the issues in Hong Kong and China, you know, and even other Asian markets, they haven't done so well. So India has been the poster boy. And whenever the global environment is strong, India tends to outperform, which is exactly what is happening. And even when I look at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, I thought NASDAQ is always very important because it holds the sentiment of the world, given what's happened in the last one year. I think 13,700 on the NASDAQ, which is another 4 5% is quite possible. And about 4,500 on the S&P 500 is entirely possible. So once you have such big targets for the US markets, it's, it's difficult to believe that India will get, get into a longish correction. You could have a knee jerk, but I don't think a sustainable variety is coming anytime soon. Okay. So viewers, for now, the working targets for August are about 18,400 if all goes well, with supports at 17,400 and 17,100, but the larger trend remains uh, higher. Uh, Gautam, just one more follow-up before I get to other questions. If indeed all goes as per plan, uh, you know, typically I've seen uh, somehow, you know, the markets are weak and call it coincidence or whatever, but during Ganesh Chaturthi or otherwise, and then in the run-up to the festive season, we've had a number of times wherein the markets do really well. The sentiment picks up, everything happens. Are there higher working targets um, uh, for, for the run-up to the festive season or are we getting ahead of ourselves? Uh, Neeraj, we're already up to and a half thousand points, you know, in a very difficult market environment. And I don't think I want to really look too much into the future because right. I think there is room for some correction. I just want to be a little practical here. Right. Uh, so I wouldn't have very large targets, but I just want to make a very important point that it's not about being top down anymore. It's about being bottom up right. because I think there are some wonderful opportunities outside of the index and the real bull market is actually playing in some of the sectors in the mid caps and in the small caps. So Nifty and the top 50 might not give you stellar returns, but outside of that, we are definitely in a bull market. So where, where are the strongest suits? Let's start with that. So I think I've been a big fan of capital goods. I think I spoke about it last time as well. I think it witnessed a breakout from a 10-year range last year. Post that breakout, you had this nice correction for about four or five months. And now look at the way the top stocks have come back. You know, an ABB, Cummins India, Siemens, LNT great structures and a lot more potential. So I think capital goods is where I would say autos were three months back or four months back. So there's a lot of upside, maybe 15% upside, even from current levels on capital goods. So that's number one. Number two, I would still go with autos at FMCG. I think rocks to a steady setup. The auto index took five years to take out its previous high. You know, when such developments happen, the rallies don't end in a hurry. And we've seen what m and and, you know, Bajaj and some of the other Tata Motors, you know, which has been a favorite off late. And I think it has the potential to go up 20%. So autos look good. FMCG led by ITC and HUL looks great. And real estate. I think our working target on that index is 530. What a spectacular comeback the entire real estate space has uh, seen in the last one and a half months. I think that is it is good for a lot more. So stick to the top names, the DLFs, the Oberoi's, the brigades and the prestige of the world, I think they'll give you a far greater returns even from these levels. So it's interesting, Gautam, that your trading bets are at least the top three that you spoke about right now are the ones which are not heavyweights on the Nifty at all. And therefore, irrespective of what happens to the index, the point that you made that these could do well even if the index were to consolidate and will not have a bearing on the Nifty. It will not make the Nifty move too much. Exactly. And I think that's the point because Reliance seems to have got into a sort of a range the IT index has been outperforming to uh, has been underperforming to a certain extent. There is room for some upside, but not great outperformance. And banks have run very hard. We love the banks. In fact, our bank Nifty target is about forty one thousand. But at these levels, the risk to what do, do not justify aggressive longs. And if a pullback were to play out, banks will get impacted. So, so the focus, as I said, you know earlier, is in the other four or five names where I think even if a market correction plays out, these guys will stand out. Hmm. Uh, you know, fundamentally, I mean, for example, Gautam, the commentary from Hero Motor Corp, even if the results that came out were shabby, 
the commentary was fairly positive and it kind of augurs well for the others in the space as well are you constructive on two wheelers at large or is there one or two of the pack that you like more just trying to understand uh, it's actually across the board because it started off with mnm uh, you know which have which has done phenomenally okay. well after underperforming for a long time then into maruti and now i think tata motors and bajaj i think they have very good structures hero keeps trying to come back but somehow falters at every stage so i'm not a big fan but if you look at the other names aisha and tata motors in particular i think they have great potential yeah the leylands and the escorts don't quite fit the bill i reckon as yet yeah, they don't they don't need it got it okay um the 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 question that a lot of people would have and before i come to what could not do well uh, or what would underperform is what will happen to it i know you spoke the last time as well that it is kind of lost its mojo a lot of people are stuck there gotham if you were for example stuck there would you swap even now some of the prices may be lower uh, than the purchase price of a lot of people so would you still swap at the current prices uh, out of it into any of the other ones which have a stronger technical indicator no i think it's a little too late to swap because i think many other stocks and sectors have run up a lot and now if you're going to swap then you might actually be on the receiving side on both sides you know because if a market correction plays out i think it in a in a certain way will stand out it's okay. seen a good rebound from the recent lows look at tcs and infosys and even wipro which is up about 15% from the lows there is room for another 5 7% upside for it so in fact at these levels if you're uncomfortable with some of the other sectors actually it and pharma is a good place to hide so it's it's more like a contrarian bet but i get the comfort from a risk to what i know got it what do you think has the chances of underperforming relatively in the current scenario well to be honest i don't have too many names you know which could underperform because it's been such a holistic rally you know just about everything is done well metals you know which we said was a punching bag till a few months back has also come back very strongly it's up 20% from the recent lows but there is one space which i want to highlight which i feel could be a dark horse it's the public sector enterprise i think some wonderful setups out there i i i get the feeling that the psc index could appreciate 25 to 30% from here which means stocks could do anywhere between 25 to 50% so if you look at the setups for some of the big names i mean bel has been our favorite all along that's done very well coal india you know the move last week i thought was special so you could i think coal india could be where itc was 6 to 8 months back i know wow. it's a slightly bold statement but i think that's what i i see with coal india and the power grids and the ntpcs of the world i think it's a good place to really commit your capital at 17700 No, Gautam. We like bold statements from you. Nobody believed I and ITC at two hundred. You were amongst the few ones who said it with conviction. And look at where that has gotten you. If you were still in that trade, I presume. <laughs> But uh, the other, the other question. Okay, so the PSUs. Uh, so for people who don't want to play individual stocks, I think the ETFs might also be a good play, right? Because I heard you say that you believe the PSU index itself could do well. Uh, exactly in fact for the last 6 weeks i i keep telling people that go for basket buying you know you don't have to really do too much uh, uh, top end research you know if you if you are in a basket of quality 20 30 50 stocks market takes care of it got it gautam i have uh, a couple of question one one or two more questions before we let you go uh, on the observations of the result season gone thus far to my mind as you said capital goods so i thought industrials and manufacturing stood out so capital goods kind of takes care of it the other space that really stood out for me was direct consumption uh, direct to the direct to consumer plays so be it the multiplexes be it the malls be it the qsrs be it the hotels anything which was top end customer focused company the results were spectacular the stocks gave the due returns even post results my question is are these overstretch the west lives devian internationals or the pvr inoxes or for that matter uh, any of the hotel names which have all given a really good return in the recent past not at all neeraj in fact you know this industry went through a black swan with what happened with covid you know so clearly uh, we we just saw the worst we saw the worst possible in possibly in 100 years i think with 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 uh, with, uh, with the unlock trade and qsr in general and i think there is a lot more upside i think you know, this entire unlock space is a trade for the next 3 to 5 years the way i see it because stocks like indian hotels has been our favorite all along you know the taj brand i've spoken about it 
multiple times you know in in our conversations so i think it's it's potentially a stock that can do 50% from here just last week we covered devyani as an official idea so we like it for another 20 30% upside uh, inox and pvr i'm not a big fan because i think multiplexes get impacted very fast anything that happens you know uh, uh, in the world today so i'm not a very big fan of these multiplex chains but if you look at the qsr the hotels uh you know the 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 delta corps of the world the nescos of the world i think there's phenomenal upside in the entire pack, uh, basket okay uh my my final question gautam and that is where a lot of people have been asking questions about fmcg per se uh, mixed results if you will a bunch of upgrades that have come in and managements have said that the pricing pressures would probably ebb after quarter 2 quarter 3 quarter 4 could actually see margin upsides as well what's your sense on the heavy duty fmcg names they'll continue to do well i think the chart well okay great absolutely i think itc is taking a bit of a breather around 300 310 but the eventual target could be about 340 350 so again in percentage terms itc returns even from here could be better than the nifty because i don't have a 10% visibility on the nifty and i think that's a very important point and therefore you have to be in stocks where you have that 10 15% kind of a visibility i see hul moving to about 3000 and as we speak today godrej consumer has seen such a wonderful breakout and i think i think it's also setting up for large upside so i think this entire fmcg consumption play and many of these other names like pedilites of the world have done very well and i think this will continue so stick to top quality is the mantra in each of these sectors that we've discussed i think the rest market takes care great well and it- not an unusually bullish but yes at these levels i was expecting that maybe we'll hear some words of caution but gotham says the charts don't indicate that so let's not embed caution where there might not be too much needed gotham shah uh, have you missed out on anything gotham any any factors the dollar index crude or 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 the bond deals in the us anything to watch out for anything that you track technically as well i uh, know nothing that connects the dots at this point you know a month and a half back there were too many pointers to look at but right now i think india is on its own and uh, because it's been the poster boy i think many of these intermarket relationships don't matter so much great okay got a pleasure talking to you thank you so much for joining us in less than a month just that it was important have seen this rally thus far so good to have you today much appreciate thank you neeraj and viewers thanks so much for tuning into this edition of the talking point